Yeah, right now, pretty much all of us are spending a lot of time at home, and so do I. And actually spend a lot of time on my computer, and recently I wondered, well, can you use a huge aircraft carrier as an airport? You know, a floating airport. And it turns out that I was not the only one with that idea. Actually, the Japanese had that exact idea. As you can see here, they built something called the Mega Float, which, as the name suggests, is a huge runway that floats on the ocean. Yeah, this was actually some kind of test runway, and it was very successful and here are some other concepts of floating airports as you can see right here this is basically just a huge aircraft carrier and it seems to work very very well now a floating aircraft would open a lot of possibilities for example if there is bad weather the airport can just float away <laughs> from the weather if that makes sense actually that would be pretty practical and you know in the country of japan space is a huge problem which is why their airports are actually off sure they have to build artificial islands for their airports because space is so limited in Japan. You know, the city of Tokyo is like as large as the whole continent of Europe or something. Yeah, probably not, but you know, you get the point, right? Yeah, these tests have actually proven it. A floating airport can be possible. And actually, floating airports have been a thing for a while. They're called aircraft carriers, right? Yep, something like this. Obviously only used for fighter jets, but even bigger planes can operate here. So let's land some huge Huge planes on aircraft carriers part three or something but today let's try some other planes maybe actually I like flying on aircraft carriers a lot I do it in my free time a lot because why not so I think it would be fun to also make a video about it so this is the twin otter plane that one is able to operate pretty much everywhere as you can see we just got launched here with some rope and that made us take off very very well now, this launching system works pretty much with every plane even with airliners maybe this can be a structure issue but it works the actual challenge with operating on an aircraft carrier is obviously landing a plane so let's just do that in the twin otter all right so the thing is this twin otter can fly slower than the actual aircraft carrier because obviously we have to think about the aircraft carrier also moving forward which can help us a lot let's go ahead oh no okay come on we're just coming in the aircraft carrier is operating at around 70 or something knots or maybe 80 knots this is quite a quick boat, I would say. And that helps us stop a lot. Nice and easy. This plane doesn't even need any runway at all. Basically, this stops. This is gonna stop in no time. And we have actually landed and stopped. That was actually not even any landing run. This was a pretty damn easy landing, definitely. And we have stopped like that. And we can just go to our gate. Let's try some bigger plane. I don't know. We might start getting into some issues, actually. I mean, the Twin Otter is pretty small. Now, now I would go for the PC-24. Yeah, let's actually go for a jet. Yeah, the PC-24 is by Pilatus, and it's a pretty versatile private jet. It can land pretty much anywhere on any surface, so maybe this shouldn't be a problem, right? Oh, there's something wrong here, Jesus. But the thing is here that this plane is a lot quicker than the aircraft carrier now. We can fly at around 110 knots. You shouldn't go under 110 knots. This can be an issue, but we are still flying stably. And we are not that much faster than the aircraft carrier. So stopping should not be an issue. That was a touchdown. Let's try stopping. And we have stopped. Yeah, the rope system kind of helped us out a bit, but this was no issue at all, basically. Yeah, the touchdown was on the harder side, which is basically the main problem of operating planes on an aircraft carrier. The touchdowns are always very, very firm, I would say. Which is why really only certified planes should be operating on an aircraft carrier. Talking about certified, let's try the biggest plane that has ever landed on an aircraft carrier in real life. And that is the C-130. The C-130 is quite a huge plane, but it can fly at slow speeds without stalling, and it can stop very quickly. Which is why the C-130 is pretty special. Let's go ahead, shall we? Now, the C-130 is actually not a small plane, though, right? Now, obviously, it is extremely challenging to land on an aircraft carrier like this, especially compared to landing on a normal runway. So safety would be an issue as well if you tried landing airliners on an aircraft carrier. We're gonna make a firm landing though, that's for sure. 
Oh, firm this was. But stopping we will. And we have stopped without any issues. That was pretty good, right? But I mean, the C-130 is a pretty sturdy plane. The landing gear is sturdy. We struck some plane here. That is not good. That is actually the main problem as well. The thing is, the wingspan of this plane is already large enough to be able to strike some planes. So this can be an issue with bigger airliners as well. But this was no problem. Let's try the 737. Yeah, but let's try this airliner now. Probably not the best idea I have had in a while. This is quite a quick stopper, actually. So maybe we will be lucky this time around as well. Okay, this was a firm landing as well here. Let's see if we can stop. Oh. Okay, we're gonna have to try this one again. Actually, it is kind of possible to land a 737 on an aircraft carrier. It's just not a very good idea, <laughs> maybe. Okay, this was actually a little bit disappointing. I have actually landed a 737 on an aircraft carrier in this flight simulator before and theoretically it's actually possible even though you will break your landing gear actually you can't really do a smooth landing on an aircraft carrier that cannot be a thing but it's kind of possible actually okay this might be successful very good very very good all right we landed and we still have quite a lot of runway left actually the thing the problem here would be uh the parking space but whatever now this was kind of pleasing even though we crashed ouch we crashed right into the aircraft carrier. That is the problem. I kind of stalled into it, uh, but we 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 are alive, right? In real life, obviously, the plane would have blown up and, and we would have probably died, but it worked, uh, kind of, right? Uh, so we can move on to a bigger plane. And now it's really starting to get ridiculous. Like, the next step would normally be the 767 or something, but obviously that is not possible. It's just dumb. So let's do it. Otherwise, I'm smart. Mm-hmm. Let's try having a smoother touchdown this time around. No, we won't. We won't. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, this is probably not very possible. Okay, we might have just turned into a boat. Maybe this plane can be used as an aircraft carrier or something. Yeah, this obviously didn't work out. This plane is just way too big. Actually, the wingspan is getting a problem here. Definitely gonna strike some planes here on the ground. Okay, this time we didn't, but yeah, this is not a very good idea. And as I said earlier, taking off itself is not a problem. It's just the landing that is a problem. Let's see. Let's release the brakes. That'll launch us. There we go. Like, we have this rope system here and that can pretty much get any plane into the air that is no problem actually we have initiated a vertical takeoff let's go back to a normal climb this was a pretty damn good takeoff i mean obviously i i don't know if it makes sense to use bigger planes yeah let's use the triple seven then i don't know i mean well something that we have learned today is that you can definitely operate planes smaller than the 737 on aircraft carriers at least uh, technically and there are still quite a lot of airliners that are smaller than the 737. I mean, this is obviously quite ridiculous. The 777 is almost as long as the aircraft carrier itself. Well, maybe not, but you know what I'm trying to say. All right, we have landed. Can we stop as well? Which we can't. Yeah, let's check out that touchdown though. Mm -hmm. That was actually pretty much on spot and as you can see, we struck the actual tower itself, the actual building here. That might not be ideal. So this plane is obviously just too big for this runway. I mean, it's not really a runway. What do you call this? I mean, it's an aircraft carrier after all. Something that would be cool though is if aircraft carriers opened to the public so that private pilots could land their Cessna 172s on it, right? I mean, the plane is genuinely slower than the aircraft carrier. That would actually be cool and could be the first step to a floating airport, right? We are over the aircraft carrier. We can touch down sometime soon we can make sure to make a smooth landing and that was a good one no need to use the brakes at all actually we can taxi to our gate or whatever it's called on an aircraft carrier i don't know so yeah guys what do you think about the concept of floating airports i think it would open a lot more possibilities and yeah i see you guys tomorrow as always good night boom smooth butter <laughs>